Stem cell transplants have freed seven people of the human immunodeficiency virus HIV, but researchers say most long-term interventions remain a distant prospect. At a major HIV conference in July, scientists announced that a seventh person had been cured of the disease. A 60-year-old man in Germany, after receiving a stem cell transplant, has been free of the virus for almost six years, researchers reported. Do it the first such instance of eliminating HIV from a person in this way was reported in 2008. But stem cell transplants, despite being highly effective at ridding people of the virus, are not a scalable strategy. It, the treatment is aggressive and poses risks, including long-term complications from graft-versus-host disease, a condition in which donor cells attack the recipient's own tissues. The procedure was possible in the seven successfully treated people only because all of them had cancers that required a bone marrow transplant, says Sharon Lewin, an infectious diseases physician who heads the Peter Doherty Institute for Infection and Immunity in Melbourne, Australia. We would never even contemplate this for someone who was otherwise healthy, Lewin says. No one is thinking about this as a cure for HIV the standard treatment for HIV is antiretroviral therapy, or ART, which involves a mix of drugs, usually taken daily, that prevents the virus from replicating inside the body. ART can reduce an infected person's viral load to an undetectable level, stopping the virus from wreaking havoc in the body and drastically reducing the risk of transmission. But for many people, such a strategy is not enough. Longer-term solutions are in the works. But how close are we to a cure for HIV or a vaccine? Now let's explore some of the latest advancements. And what advances have been made in the treatment of HIV problems, such as unreliable supply of medicines, drug resistance, and the stigma surrounding HIV infection mean that many people who take ART are hoping for longer-term solutions. Many patients say they're willing to take the risk of adverse events, and even mortality risk to be cured of HIV, says Ravindra Gupta, a microbiologist at the University of Cambridge, UK. And net In most of the stem cell transplant cases, the cells that people received contained a mutation that prevents the expression of CCR5, a protein that HIV particles use to enter cells. Although this procedure is not possible in most people with HIV, its success in a small number of patients has led to the development of gene therapies that target CCR5. There are also gene therapies in the pipeline that target the virus itself, such as inserting a gene that produces antibodies to keep the virus under control. Other other avenues of investigation include efforts to control or eliminate the latent HIV reservoir, a pool of HIV, infected cells that do not produce viral particles, remaining hidden from the immune system, but capable of reawakening after a person stops art. Modern methods that target this latent reservoir include boosting the immune response, waking and attacking dormant HIV-infected cells, or putting the virus in reservoirs permanently to sleep. Most of these therapies are still in early stages of clinical trials, according to Lewin. We're still talking about early days, there have been, however, advances in longer-term treatments in recent years. In 2020 and 2021, regulatory agencies approved a combination of injectable antiviral drugs, capitagravir and rilpivirine, which can be given every two months to people with HIV to keep the virus at bay. And in 2022, regulators approved the injectable lenacapavir, which is needed only every six months. No. What about preventing transmission? In the absence of vaccines, pre-exposure prophylaxis, or PrEP, has been key to stemming the spread of HIV. Until recently, PrEP existed only as daily oral medicines. When taken correctly, oral PrEP reduces the risk of contracting HIV by about 99%. Some of the injectable antivirals approved as long-acting HIV treatments have also proved effective in preventing infection. In 2021, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved Capitacraver for prophylactic use, 
lenacapavir might also soon be available as a PrEP drug. In a study published in July, researchers reported that twice yearly shots of lenacapavir successfully prevented HIV infection in a cohort of more than 2,000 sexually active young women and adolescent girls. What is happening in vaccine development? The field has made steady progress towards a vaccine since the first HIV infection was reported in 1981, but there's still a long way to go, says Rama Rao Amara, an immunologist at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. One of the biggest challenges facing the field is developing a vaccine that can broadly neutralize the multiple strains of the HIV virus. On top of that, the fact the virus is heavily glycosylated coated in sugar molecules makes it difficult to design an antibody that can break through this barrier. In a pair of papers published in Science Immunology on 30th August, researchers report an immunogen that can generate potent, broadly neutralizing antibodies against HIV in macaques. Net these studies show that it's possible to at least begin the process of engaging immune cells to produce broadly neutralizing antibodies. New research published on 30th May in two papers in Nature Immunology demonstrates that vaccination can induce broadly neutralizing antibody body B NABI precursors to HIV glycoprotein 41, an important potential vaccination target in mice and non-human primates. The results from both studies, which focus on membrane proximal external region antibodies, provide additional evidence supporting and guiding the germline targeting strategy of HIV vaccine development. And many scientists think that for wide vaccine-induced protection against HIV and other antigenically diverse viruses like influenza, B NABs will need to be elicited. I of VI's research and development program designed to elicit broadly neutralizing antibodies to HIV is based on a strategy called germline targeting. This approach relies on carefully sequenced vaccinations designed to coach naive B cells to produce B NABs. So, study results from the IAVG001 Phase 1 clinical trial demonstrated that it is possible to prime B cells as a first step toward their maturation to produce B NABs, an important proof of principle for this approach. IAVG001 elicited VRC01 class B NAB P precursors specifically. While this was an exciting step forward, it will be necessary to develop an HIV vaccine that elicits multiple classes of B NABs to achieve broad immunity to HIV. It is assumed that for B NABs to be effective, they must possess both the breadth to block a wide variety of circulating viruses and the potency to successfully ward off infection. The study described in Schiffner et EEL provides another important finding supporting the potential of the gential of the germline targeting approach. Glycoproteins on the outside of HIIV are important antibody targets for future vaccines. M per targeting B NABs such as BNAB10E8, are of particular interest for scientists because of their high neutralizing breadth. However, 10E8 class BNABs have specific, challenging physical requirements to enable binding to the targeted glycoprotein on HIV. Many of the lead researchers for this study are from IAVI's Neutralizing Antibody Consortium. They demonstrated that it is possible to engineer nanoparticles that produce BNAB precursor responses to HIV GP41. These protein nanoparticles induced BNAB precursor responses in stringent mouse models and rhychisis macaques, and MRN, a coated nanoparticles, induce similar responses in mice. These important findings continue to support the potential of the germline targeting strategy for HIV vaccine development. This strategy was also progressed by a series of preclinical research findings published in Science earlier this month. It, that is not an easy task, research say, as the immunogen is currently being tested in a phase I clinical trial. At, as to whether we will get an HIV cure soon, researchers says. HIV is not an easy virus to deal with, otherwise, we would have already had a vaccine, 